What's happening? Andy here. I am joined today by my friend, George Grafinakis of Sharp Electronics. How are you, George? How are you, Andy? I am great. It is good to see you again. Haven't seen you in a few weeks. We just um, connected at the uh, one of Sharp's five road shows. Uh, why don't before we get into all that, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do for Sharp Electronics and talk about what Sharp Electronics does for our industry? Sure. I'm associate director for hardware product management. Um, I coordinate the efforts of the product team to ensure that we bring the right products to market at the right time and at the right price. And it's a collaboration effort uh, with our factory. Uh, we do a lot of research with our dealers uh, and our community to understand what are the features and the workflow capabilities that are that are needed. Uh, and we're, that helps us stay on the, the leading edge of providing the right features uh, to the market. So Sharp is a, you know, a Longtime traditional office equipment um, manufacturer. They're they're now. Um, you guys have products in all sorts of different areas: collaboration, displays, uh, interactive displays, um, lots of different things. But you know, your core one of the core things you offer is still imaging copiers, printers. Um, you know, putting toner uh, toner onto paper, right? So. Um, you you had a, a reseller show recently. It went to five cities. Which, which cities were those? I, I saw you in Anaheim. I know there was a Philadelphia one. Where, where, where else were you guys? Yeah. Well, the, our first show was in was in uh, Atlanta, uh, and then Chicago, and Houston, and then Anaheim, uh, and then we ended in Philadelphia last week. Congratulations! Yeah, it must and have they were been all like... great shows. Yeah, they were all great shows. Well, what I went to was fantastic. You had, um, I think, you had about two hundred people at it. it. Was a quite quite a large show. It was a lot bigger yeah. than I expected. Um, yeah. I, it was nice to to see the guys out west. Typically, I do the eastern one, so it was kind of kind of cool to see uh, some of the the dealers out there. Uh, but one of the things I think that led to our our conversation today, you guys, um, you you specifically spent some time talking about security and. You know, we, we reminisced, you and I, we've we've known each other for a while. I think you probably knew me when I had hair. Um, <laughs> but we, we talked about how, you know, Sharp used to be, um, security w w has always been, I think, um, once once we got into the connected age, um, a, a real mainstay of, of the Sharp offering. And we were joking about the, the, the giant safe that you used to lug back and forth to all the shows, the products. So some of the older guys might remember that. Um, I don't remember if it was black or red, but it said sharp and so, you remember that, right? Sure, so sure. Um, where are we today compared to the days when you so, used to lug the safe around? Why don't you tell us about- Well, what we don't lug the safe around anymore, but you know, Sharp <laughs> has always been a leader in MFP security going all the way back to 2001. We were, we were, we were the first in the MFP industry uh, to achieve common criteria certification back then. I remember then. that. Um, and we've continued our leadership in security uh, in, in MFP technology. And these latest products that we just introduced um, earlier this year. How, how many, the past, how many the past, of those were there? Um, well, we introduced 24 models total, ranging in um, 26 pages per minute to 90 pages per minute. Wow. Uh, and they're all built on this latest um, platform. Uh, it's their, this latest security platform, and we really have taken a giant leap forward on these products. I'm sure, as, as you know, over the past several years, hackers and malicious intruders have really ramped up their activity. Um, it, it became actually pervasive during the pandemic. Uh, and we were developing these new products actually during that time. And um, one of the things that we've done is we've really added some strong security capabilities uh, to help businesses stay safe. So, so these capabilities, right? Um, the the security uh, messaging in this last uh, this last series of uh, roadshows. This was a standout piece. Like you had a you had a few things you showed at them. You you know we had um, Jim Robbins from Dynabooks was there. You had uh, some people from some other parts. Uh, uh, any Sharp NEC was there. Were, were there? But security was also a pretty significant standalone part of that. And so what, what is it about this new security offering um, that's changed? What's, what have you done? You know, uh, what's this next level that we're, we're looking at compared to the old, you know, sharp security, which sure. was also, you know, known to be very, very strong. So we've actually built on our existing technology and we've added some, some new technology features. Um, starting with BIOS integrity check at startup where the, the device will 
verify the BIOS startup files before it executes, uh, comparing it to a known reference file. Uh, and if it doesn't match, it's not going to start the machine. Once it passes that test, then it goes to the next level where it loads the firmware in the machine. And it does the same thing. It, it compares the firmware uh, to a known reference data file to verify its integrity. Um, in the event that the firmware doesn't pass that check, uh, it has firmware attack prevention and self-recovery. So it will look uh, to an original version of the firmware stored in a um, hidden location on the solid state drive, um, and it'll proceed to load that. Uh, however, if it doesn't, it doesn't identify uh, any intrusions, it'll continue to load um, the firmware and move on uh, to the next level of starting the machine, uh, exec executing the boot files. Um, and then during, uh, during operation of the machine, we've added real-time intrusion detection. Um, and one, of, one of the things that uh, is very important is that real, the real-time intrusion detection uh, looks for abnormal connection requests to the device. Um, and this is um, sometimes referred to as a denial of service attacks. I'm sure that uh, you've heard of those. Yes. Um, and what happens is the, re the remote party uh, floods the device with connection requests, uh, making it unable to respond to real requests. And as a result, um, it, shuts, it shuts down. So let me ask you about that, because I am familiar... I am familiar with that from, you know, we run a website, obviously, and that's that's always the great fear that your website's going to get hit with something like that. I hadn't heard um, of hardware and devices, IoT devices uh, being targeted in that manner. Is that is that something that is um, going on right now? Is that something that's increasing in, in you know, how often we're seeing it in occurrences or, or is this something you're just getting out in front of? Um Actually, denial of, denial of service attacks have have been in the news for a long time, um, and what this what what this feature does uh, is it, it it heads it off actually, and it it, pre it prevents those types of attacks from uh, getting through the network interface of the device. And what happens is when it identifies uh, the threshold level. Uh, it will deny any further requests from that remote IP address, and it'll it'll. it'll I'll put it in a folder that um, is is unavailable to uh, be accessed. Now the the network administrator, of course, has control to all of this, and they can they can adjust uh, the threshold level uh, for these connection requests because every network environment is different. Yeah, uh, depending depending upon how many endpoint devices and um, the the uh, the security checks that 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 the I, the IT people are running on their own network, uh, there is a balance. Uh, for the right threshold level that you want to set. So that's why um, we provide this technology, um, but we work with the IT administrators to um, enable it and set it to their desired level. So super interesting. Um, I, I wasn't aware that, that the devices were being targeted in that manner. I, I you know, I, I've always kind of assumed that the big threat with with the um, with the hardware, like a copy or a printer, or a scanner, or anything like that, um, would tend to you know have been just somebody trying to get in and access the network through you know using it as a back door. Um, the denial of service had hadn't even occurred to me. So another another area you guys are are, are looking into um, during during your conference, you made you know some some pretty solid claims about how uh, you, you felt you are um, one of the leaders in this space. You compared yourself to some of the other companies that are out there really pushing that message to maybe some with bigger budgets in that area. Um, <laughs> what is it about your program that you think makes it so significant, um, such a great uh, uh, program for the, for our resellers, your, your resellers? You know, is it, um, is it certifications? If so, you know, what certifications do you have? Um, you know, what makes this such a solid program that's at, at such, a, at, you know, such a comparably strong level? Yeah, so we've added some other security features. Uh, oh, okay. Well. Um, so we've, we've added on to our uh, existing features, which we previously had, such as application whitelisting, which looks for uh, known reference executables when up 
updating onboard applications such as Microsoft Teams or OneDrive or, or SharePoint, um, because periodically those applications need to be updated. Uh, and what application whitelisting does uh, is it looks for a known reference file uh, to make sure uh, that the files that are being loaded are authentic. And it also does the same thing with firmware. When firmware is trying to load remotely uh, over the network, uh, it also does the same thing to make sure that uh, the integrity of the firmware um, is uh, incredible. Yeah. Um, and some of these features that we have uh, overlap each other, which, which, which makes our um, multi-level security strategy so, so compelling. Um, in addition to that, we also have a standard trusted platform module version 2.0, uh, which provides an additional layer of protection for secure environments. Uh, and what it does is it actually pr protects the encryption key data uh, for the solid state drive. So essentially, uh, any information that is stored on the solid state drive, and that includes not just like data files that are encrypted, but um, personal information and uh, um, firmware update information, and it, um, it can be protected uh, with the trusted platform module version 2.0. And that's a standard feature. And we had the trusted platform module previously on our previous generation products, uh, but it was part of our optional data security kit. And we still now have our- come, Now it just comes with it. Now it just comes with it. And we still have our data security kit, which pro which provides common criteria certification. So if, if you're in uh, one of those higher level um, accounts, such as government installation or Department of Defense that uh, requires that you have common criteria certification, certification we can provide that also uh, with our optional data security kit. Very cool. And then we also added a couple other things. We also uh, have um, antivirus as an option as well now, which uh, is powered by Bitdefender. We've yep. partnered with, uh, with Bitdefender, which is uh, um, one of the strongest uh, antivirus uh, companies that's that's out there, um, and it's right it's you know it's it's right up there with some, with some of the other ones like Macavine. Protecting my computer and, right now. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 and um, you know some of the some of the things that uh, um, customers might ask. And we even had these questions at our road shows. It's like, why well, you got all of these great new uh, security features? Why do you also uh, need antivirus? You know, well the reason why you need antivirus is to pr protect for unknown and unknown uh, virus activity and Trojans uh, that are new and unheard of, sometimes referred to as zero day threats. You know, zero day threat is, um, is, a, is, a, uh, um, is a threat uh, that, that's unknown. Uh, and what the, at the, what the Bitdefender antivirus does is it uses multiple techniques to identify uh, virus activity, um, in, including things like digital signature and pattern matching. Um, and it also uses machine learning algorithms to identify unknown virus activity. Uh, and the reason for this is because, um, you know, hackers and malicious intruders have uh, not only stepped up their activity, but they're using advanced technology and they're changing their methods and their techniques all the time. Uh, it's important to have a higher, a higher level uh, security to protect your devices, you know, and uh, manufacturers uh, that are offering uh, this type of uh, se security are providing um, strong protection for their customers. Well, it sounds, you know, <clears throat> you, you think about the, the office equipment and at first, your first instinct may not be that, that it needs the level of security of a computer, but it's RAM, it's, it's right, it's RAM, yep. it's, it's a hard drive, it's got processors in it. Um, sounds sounds an awful like, like a computer to me. So, you know, the vulnerabilities that are in your desktop, that are in your laptop, and even in your, you know, some yep. other maybe pieces of hardware that you may use, um, some of those do translate across. And, and you know, if you're vulnerable there, you're going to be vulnerable in that same hardware. I mean, if, you're, if your hard drive gets locked up, it doesn't matter whether it's a computer or a copier, right? I mean, yep. anything, it's, uh, it's the same issue. It's the same problem. So, so you have multiple levels of security, um, depending on, I guess, on the requirements of, of the organization, but even, sure. uh, even the basic package that comes with the office equipment now sounds like it has a, 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 a much more significant layer than sure. you used to include. Yeah, actually everything I mentioned, except for the optional antivirus powered by Bitdefender uh, and our data security kit, uh, everything else I mentioned is standard, comes, comes, comes with the machine. 
uh, and you know we encourage uh, customers to take advantage of those security features that it has to offer. <clears throat> well, so you just you just showed this at five roadshows, right? You touched a lot of people uh, in the field. Um, you had a lot of sales reps at these events. Now, the next big show for Sharp is going to be uh, the dealer show, the national dealer show. And that's going to be, I believe, in Las Vegas mm -hmm. in uh, in April. Um, is this going to be, an, you know, do we have new updates then? Or is this going to be, um, you usually have a big product fair at that show. Are you, are you going to be showcasing mm -hmm. uh, the security and all the different levels? Is this going to be are, a major and, part? You know, we're also, we're also, we're also, going to be introducing some other products between now and then and uh, our, our our future sharp products are are going to be built on the security platform so um, we introduced it um, like i was saying earlier 24 new models in this category uh, in the work group category 22 of those models black and white and color um, are built on a common engine platform and then uh, during the summer near the end of the summer we also introduced two uh, high-speed monochrome products at uh, 70 and 90 pages per minute that are also built using that security platform as well. Um, so you know, next year we have some other products coming out, including some A4 products and um, uh, also some uh, light, light production uh, color products as well. So it sounds from, from basically like the home office all the way up to light production, um, you're going to have a, a very sophisticated upgraded security suite. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see a lot of this at, at that show on the floor there. Yeah, we're, we're actually very excited about it. Um, you know, um, uh, the, the last, uh, there was a red, those road shows, the five road shows that we were at, um, we, sh we showcased uh, uh, a lot of the new features, but, we, but we, we did focus a lot on the new security capabilities uh, for dealer salespeople, uh, because we wanted them to be able to understand them so that they could communicate them uh, to their customers, because uh, it's more important than ever now uh, to protect endpoint devices. And, you know, MFPs are sometimes uh, overlooked uh, in, in that regard in terms of the level of security that you really should be providing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's, um, you know, people take it for granted that you just plug it in and it works sometimes and you, you kind of, I mean, yeah. A lot of a lot of these machines, you and your competitors, they they come with uh, some level of security. And and the bottom line is, if it's not set up, it doesn't matter if it has any security. Um, right. And this is one of the reasons that customers really, you know, I think still work with with office equipment resellers. Like you can go get a printer on Amazon or you know on the internet or at, at, at a supply store, um, but you need somebody to, uh, that understands you know how to install it first of all, and and more importantly how to set up these these features, you know, these security features and make sure that, you know, your, your device is protected, your network is protected and your people's, uh, you know, assets are, are protected. So, you know, it's, it's worthless if it's not set up, if it's not used. Right. So, um, right. Great, great catching up with you, George. I'm glad we got to spend some time talking about uh, this in a little more depth. You, you had a, uh, it was a great session you guys did over in, in the show that I saw. So, um, Thanks, thanks again for coming on the show today. Any last shout outs to anybody for this uh, pre-Thanksgiving show we're doing here? No, we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, look, look forward to uh, a prosperous 2023. Yes, me too, me too. Great seeing you, George. Say hi to everybody at Sharp. Happy holidays. And uh, we will catch up with you soon. We'll see you at the very latest. We'll see you at the show in, uh, in April in Las Vegas. Thanks again, George. Thanks, Andy.